So, of course, you know, there are two really important runoff races taking place in Georgia that will ultimately determine which party controls the U.S. Senate. And what I find fascinating is that both of the Republicans in these races were busted just this year doing insider trading. So if you were caught doing insider trading, you'd think that that alone should disqualify you. But yet this is still going to be a close race because I guess that corruption is expected in D.C. So long as our team is doing it, it's okay. But if the other team does it, not okay. But what's interesting to me about David Perdue is that he's more corrupt even than the average U.S. politician, which is a really high bar to pass, but he passes that easily. So we're going to talk about some new developments with regard to his corruption because it is so brazen that this man should not be a United States senator. This man should be behind bars because he is a criminal. He is a crook. Now, if you've watched his debate, I want to talk about that first. Um, the reason why this race is even close is because John Ossoff, as much as I hate him because he stands for nothing, he low-key demolished David Perdue at the debate that they had before the election. Take a look. Well, perhaps Senator Perdue would have been able to respond properly to the COVID-19 pandemic if you hadn't been fending off multiple federal investigations for insider trading. It's not just that you're a crook, Senator. It's that you're attacking the health of the people that you represent. You did say COVID-19 was no deadlier than the flu. You did say there would be no significant uptick in cases. All the while, you were looking after your own assets and your own portfolio, and you did vote four times to end protections for pre-existing conditions. That was absolutely brutal. And again, I'm no fan of John Ossoff, and I will say that to you every single time his name comes up, but that is how you dismantle a politician. Now, because of that, um, you know, shockingly, David Perdue didn't want to do another debate, but yet there was still going to be another debate because if you want this seat, you need to show up and debate your opponent. But, you know, he didn't want another disaster. So when the debate took place for the runoff, this is what happened. Uh, this is the runoff debate for the U.S. Senate seat currently held by Senator David Perdue of Georgia. And the candidates are in alphabetical order. Democrat John Ossoff. He is CEO of Insight TWI, a media production company that investigates corruption, organized crime and war crimes for international news organizations. Republican David Perdue has served in the U.S. Senate since 2015. Before his election, he sat on the board of five major corporations and co-founded Purdue Partners, a global trading company. Senator Purdue declined to participate in this debate and is represented by an empty podium. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. And you think, you know, why would you not show up to a debate if your opponent is going to be debating an empty podium? Isn't that embarrassing? But if I were David Purdue, David Purdue, I wouldn't want to show up to this debate as well because I think that just like hiding away my face that's the better strategy here because he's continued to make a fool of himself. And a report from the New York Times came out and showed that he is the most active trader in all of the United States Senate. And we're learning more and more about the insider trading deal he was busted with this year. Now, you know, the ethics panel from the Senate, they basically said, you know, we, we can't prove that he used the information that he was privy to as a U.S. senator to do insider trading. And that to me is a joke because, you know, we can never prove a quid pro quo exists between large multinational corporations and politicians. But when they take that financial contribution from a large corporation, we know implicitly that there's an agreement that you're going to do the bidding of said large multinational corporation. So you can't prove that that's a quid pro quo, but nonetheless, it still is corruption, albeit legally, it's a legalized bribe, but it's still a bribe nonetheless, and you're still peddling influence. So, you know, it's laughable to think that, oh, well, we can't prove that this is insider trading. Of course it is. But now more evidence has come out showing you might actually be able to prove this is legitimately a case of insider trading to which he should be prosecuted for. So as Roger Sollenberger of Salon reports, Senator David Perdue, one of two multimillionaire Georgia Republicans facing tight runoff elections in January, drew scrutiny this spring for stock transactions made in the weeks ahead of the coronavirus outbreak in the United States while he was receiving privileged briefings on the impending pandemic. According to news reports and Perdue's financial disclosures, the trades involved 112 transactions as much as $825,000 
dollars in sales and 1.8 million in purchases. The timing raised flags for various reasons. Purdue sold up to 165,000 in shares of a casino company that later shuttered, for instance, and made an investment in a company that manufactures personal protective equipment on the same day Purdue attended his first classified pandemic briefing. In a series of transactions in late February, Purdue also invested up to $245,000 in the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer. Though the Pfizer purchase has been reported previously, the events surrounding it have not. One week after those stock purchases, the company publicly announced it would be developing a coronavirus vaccine. Although the Justice Department eventually cleared Purdue of his insider trading, this synchronicity raises new questions about what the senator knew and when. Yeah, I'll say. Now, what also is important is that his defense is falling apart because he's maintained that it's not him who's making all of these decisions unilaterally he has you know this third party advisor that makes trades on his behalf so his hands are clean here regardless of what information he knew it's not him who's making these decisions that's a lie because as Sollenberger continues this spring, Purdue pushed back against allegations of insider trading in advance of the coronavirus, claiming that outside advisors made the calls without his input, but a bombshell New York Times report last week made clear that was a lie. This September, Justice Department investigators found that Purdue had instructed one of his wealth managers to offload more than $1 million in a financial firm after the CEO tipped off the senator in a personal email. The Pfizer transactions would seem to have required even more faith in his broker, who apparently felt counterintuitive confidence in the company's stock in the early stages of a market-wide crash and during a week when its shares fell in line with the Dow's overall drop of more than 6%. Purdue's broker would have been similarly undaunted by the company's February 27th warning to investors that the pandemic could adversely impact its operations, including clinical trials. Quote, the extent to which the coronavirus impacts our operations will depend on future developments, which are highly uncertain and cannot be predicted with confidence, including the duration of the outbreak, new information which may emerge concerning the severity of the coronavirus and the actions to contain the coronavirus or treat its impact, among others. In particular, the continued spread of the coronavirus globally could adversely impact our operations, including, among others, our manufacturing and supply chain, sales and marketing, and clinical trial operations, and could have an adverse impact on our business and our financial results. Purdue's broker chose to buy more Pfizer stock that day. So in other words, gotcha, bitch. there's nothing left to say about this. He shouldn't be running for a U.S. Senate seat. He should be in prison right now for insider trading. This is very clear. Like, this isn't like the usual corruption that we see in D.C. I want to emphasize that. It's not just, you know, the implication that if I take this contribution from company X, they are going to expect me to do their bidding and deregulate them or not impose new regulations. This is different. This is him very deliberately making decisions based on information that you'd have to be a United States senator to have. I mean, the details here speaks for itself. When no sane person would want to purchase more Pfizer stock after they released that warning to investors, he did. He took information when a CEO sent him an email and told him about what he should or shouldn't do. This is explicit corruption. He's basically flaunting it in front of everyone's faces. And if there's no prosecution in this instance, I mean, when will there ever be a case where we can logically deduce that insider trading is what's going on? Because if it's not happening here, if you conclude that maybe he's innocent, maybe it's just a coincidence, then I mean, basically, senators can do whatever they want. Because if he gets away with it, you can get away with anything. How much more explicit and brazen do you have to be to where we actually see someone be held legally accountable who's in power? I mean, if this were someone who was not a United States senator, just someone who had no power, no money, they would already be in prison. But the fact that there's even a question is all because of his status and his wealth. Lock him up. Like, what are, what are we doing? Throw him in jail. He's clearly guilty. He's corrupt. And it's sad that, you know, he's a United States senator. He's in a position to where he really could be taking meaningful action to represent his constituents. But what is he doing? He's looking out for his own financial well-being. This is disgusting. He's not just a bad person. He's corrupt in the legal sense. So I don't know what it's going to take, but if you're this openly corrupt and you see no consequences for your actions, then, I mean, this is going to open the door to more corruption.
right? He shouldn't even be a contender to be a U.S. senator. But we're beyond that. Like, we should be talking about this man being in prison. But the fact that he's probably going to get away with this, it speaks to the fact that we have a two-tier justice system in the United States of America. If you're rich and powerful, you can do whatever you want. Be explicitly corrupt, flaunt it, and nothing happens to you. You could be, you know, up for re-election in a runoff that's really close. But if you're a poor person, you uh, smoke weed or sell drugs, you get locked away for a really long time. Like, how disgusting and egregious is that? 